from the SiliconANGLE Media office in Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube. Now here's your host, Dave Vellante. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this Cube conversation. We're here again with Jason Thomas, who's the CIO of Cole Scott and Cassane CSK. Uh, law firm in, in Florida, and we're going to talk tech a little bit, um, and, and specifically we're going to focus a little bit on sort of infrastructure, architecture, some of the, the tools and products that, that Jason is using, how he's applying technology. Good to see you again, Jason. Thanks for coming on. Thank you. So, we know about your law firm, uh, largest uh, civil defense law firm in Florida, very fast growing, you know, I think they said 400 plus attorneys, right? So growing, what, in the last, she said, three or four years to from about 300 or so, right? Mm -hmm. So very, very fast growing, dynamic, uh, doing awesome, that's great, congratulations. I want to talk about your infrastructure. So paint us a picture of what your shop looks like, and we'll get into it. Yep, so um, I'm very big on centralization, so um, when I first arrived at the firm, we, we, we had a lot of, uh, Data sprawl is, is the best way to put it. You know, just kind of servers everywhere, different offices. And I said, first thing we need to do, take all this. We need, we need to get everything in the data center. That's that's just going to make life much easier, um, as much as possible. So, at, at this point, um, all we really see in any given office is a uh, main controller and a print server. That's it. And uh, other than that, everything else is is in the in the data center. We, we use um, pure storage on the back end for for our SAN. Um, for our for our high performance type applications, um, for document management, where we've moved or in the process of moving all that to the cloud, um, that's much more efficient that way. Sitting on uh, an all flash array is not doesn't make sense as far as PDFs and Word documents go. You're not going to see the uh, the compression or you know data reduction there. And so uh, we've got that there. Um, so we've got I've got a kind of a multi-layer strategy. I'm not to say that I'm paranoid, but I'm kind of paranoid uh, when it comes to data production, data loss. <laughs> and so we, we started as simple as um, um, our file servers, for example, we have shadow copies enabled. That's the simplest, it's free. So someone deletes a random file or something rather than going to our, even we don't have to go, go to our backup system. We just take a look at some snapshots, go back and uh, restore that if it's you know something simple like that. That way, even if we wanted to let an end user to restore a file, we could, but we, we handle that. So it's not self-serve. Yeah, it's, it's not uh, self-serve, but, be, but we, we do it for yeah. them, but it's a basic tech can do that. You don't have to call you, the system admin to handle that. Anything further than that, then yeah, we, we go to the backups and then uh, um, our, uh, part of our, back, our next step in our backup strategy, we, we are a uh, rubric shop, so we have a, uh, um, a brick, a brick as they call it, in uh, in in our data in in, in our um, backup data center. We have another data center just for backups, so um, that um, that all gets stored in the uh, rubric. It's it's completely immutable um, and um, it's got decent retention on that. So, um, did you bring in rubric? I brought in rubric. There? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Why did you bring in rubric? Um, we were using um, and. And you had uh, mentioned it earlier in the second. We, we, when we started out, we, we were much smaller than we were years ago. Um, we were using a product that was probably more geared towards SMB, mm -hmm. and we needed something a little more enterprise. So and that's uh, we brought in Rubric a couple of years ago. Okay. Um, and um, we've we've you know we've done some. We haven't had to use it. Thankfully, haven't had to use it much. Um, it's there, and we do, obviously do testing on it uh, on a regular basis. Um, I have spun up a VM on it, which was awesome. That I my personal personally ruined a VM myself that wouldn't boot. So, but luckily it was a test VM, so I was able to spin one up there. So it works as advertised. It's awesome, very fast. Um, and then we've also got another data center outside the state of Florida, where we um, we have another. Basically, it's, it's it's basically a replica or a duplicate of what we have in our main data center, and we replicate pure to pure. We have another pure. Uh, storage unit in that data center, and we use their um, replication technology um, and snapshotting to uh, to put everything there as well. Okay, and, how, and what about the network? What's that look like? Um, so we have right now we have we have 13 offices now, and um, they're all on a on an MPLS, a private network, and we've got uh, secondary and third internet connections um, for 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 backup or internet in general. We're looking at. Um, 
some type of SD-WAN strategy. It means a lot of things to a lot of folks, but um, for us, we'd like to kind of take advantage of those secondary and third connections and create our own kind of private network if we have an issue with the uh, MPLS. And you're a VMware shop, right? Yep. And yep. you also, you, you put stuff in the cloud. What's, what's your cloud provider? Yep, so, and then our kind of final layer in that, in that as part of that strategy is I, I did want to have um, the option and look in the future too to uh, put, put, put a replicate to the cloud. So um, I got in touch with the Clumio. They're, they're pretty new, new on the street, um, but um, you know, the, the uh, CEO and um, the, I know a few of the folks there from other industries and other places and you know, I have a lot of trust in what they're doing and um, basically we are also replicating um, all our um, servers to, to, the, to, to the AWS cloud using Clumio. Um, so it's, um, it integrates into vCenter and basically um, sends all the data up to, uh, to the AWS cloud. And so, um, and again, I get the same type of retention as a rubric. We get uh, seven years retention, um, and it's immutable as well. So, that's my uh, kind of my backup of the backup plan. Um, in the future, who knows? Um, we may not even need the DR site anymore. Um, we may just go straight uh, if if we need to fail over, and we just fail over to AWS vCenter in the cloud. Um, we've got um, our Clumio backups there, and we have the ability to spin up VMs there as well. So. Okay, so you've got uh, uh, VMware running on AWS, mm -hmm. and that's what you're using Clumio to yep. protect, correct? And why Clumio and not Rubrik if you're a Rubrik shop? Um, the management piece, the simplicity of the interface, it's, it's um, I, I like the fact that they manage everything for you, so you don't even have to have agents on the servers. You basically, um, it's, it's under their um, account, you simply install a uh, appliance locally um, in your environment, um, a virtual appliance, and they take care of the rest. And and you're just presented with an interface, a, a, a GUI interface to do whatever, whether it's to do restores or monitor or um, check up on the indexing um, of the data. That's all there. It's, it's pretty simple. There's really not much to do. It was the simplicity of the uh, the solution that that was really attractive, and it's. Um, in, in my mind, it's, it's, it's a no-brainer as far as cost and effectiveness. And, and it's pure SaaS model is my understanding. Pure SaaS. Correct, yeah. so you're not installing any hardware? Or... Nope, no hardware, no agents. Um, it's simply, yeah, it's an integration into vCenter and you just let it do its thing. Um, and that's it. It's interesting, I mean, you look at you know, the history of SaaS. It kind of started with CRM, you know, kind of went from Siebel to Salesforce. Um, you had you know, Exchange went to Gmail, and then mm -hmm. eventually Office 365. You saw saw ServiceNow actually took a while. They sort of disrupted BMC, mm -hmm. then, but, but that took about a, a you know a decade. Workday was much faster, right? Workday took uh, uh, well, who was the PeopleSoft? I guess was the the main HR mm -hmm. product. Do you, so, do you feel like? Uh, backup is 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 next, or is it sort of going to be this this hybrid world, this mix of sort of on-prem backup folks and traditional backup and and SaaS? Or do you think, like many of these other, and not that these other companies that I just mentioned go away? I mean, you know, Teradata is going to be doing still well. You got Snowflake disrupting them, but do you see the the SaaS backup as something that's going to have legs? Yeah, because. Um... When you talk about cloud, it, it, it's still, um, depending on what you want to do, putting a, your entire infrastructure in the cloud, it, I mean, it's expensive. You, you, everyone's preaching cloud, 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 but you kind of have to look at it and say, okay, does it really make sense? From, from, a, from a cost perspective, it doesn't always make sense. It's, it's very expensive to uh, spin up a VM in Azure or AWS, you know, once, once you uh, put in all the storage and compute costs. Um, but um, the things like backup, it totally makes sense. I mean, and honestly, it's been going on. I mean, at least a decade, right? Between Carbonite, Carbonite and Mosey, and all these, all these players sure, in, right. in the uh, For endpoint. Right? In, you know, so the, the people have been doing it. Um, I mean, Clumio, all they've done is just taking it to the enterprise, and, and they're taking advantage of um, different storage tiers in Amazon. I mean, this, it's not. There's not. There's nothing. Uh, there's nothing complex, I would say, or not. You know, they didn't come up with something amazing. They just figured out. They took something and, and don't tell that to the yeah, engineers. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure, listen, guys, I'm sure there's a lot of complexity to the engineering behind it. But basically, all they've done is it's put a nice interface on top of something, 
uh, on top, and, and, and they've taken all the complexity out of, you know, setting up your own AWS account and managing all your buckets and all that, you know. They're, they're taking care of all that and doing it for you, basically. Um, and how they do it, you know, I, I don't know, but uh, definitely different storage tiers and, and mixes of that to make all that happen. But they just make it super simple and, and super affordable. Um, it's the other piece. It's it's very very affordable in my mind, as opposed to um, other directions I could go with cloud backup. Yeah, you mentioned that a couple of times. First, though, it's it's amazing to me how we're. It's like you're compressing the innovation cycles in backup. I mean, it was. It just feels like just recently where Cohesity rubric mm -hmm. raised you know hundreds of millions of dollars, and it was all about simplicity. And yep. they they I think each of those companies, and as I'm sure it does Veritas and Dell EMC and Commvault, they all have cloud plays. Right, so I'm still trying to understand what's different about Clumia. It sounds like it's pure SaaS, that's a different, I mean, you've mentioned cost a couple of times, but maybe add some color to that. They've basically done what, they've, take, they've, done, they've taken what Rubrik has done. Um, so I'll back up to when, um, when I first look at Rubrik, uh, basically the phone call I got was, hey man, I'm telling you this is like totally disruptive and it's going to blow your mind. I'm like, dude. <laughs> It's backups. You're not going to blow my mind. Give me a break. He's like, oh, just, give, just give me, give me a chance. I was like, all right, all right, come on, come on. Come in and blow my mind. And literally, I was like, man, why didn't I think of this? It blew your mind. It blew my mind. I was like, oh, this is like literally like uh, you, you, you took, you put a web interface on top of the entire thing, and you basically have to do nothing. It does all the indexing. It's, it's like a search. If I want to search for a file, I just simply type the name of the file like I would in Google, and it just searches across. I don't have to know where it exists. I just need to know that it's there. And basically what Clumia has done, if they've, they've just taken that and just put it into the cloud. They've done this you know, similar thing. They, they index all your VMs, and then if I need to restore a file or search for something, I just type the name of the file, and it says, here's all the hits that I got. What do you want to restore? Uh, it, you know, whereas, you know, I remember back, back in the day, or back in the day, two years ago, if you, you need to restore something, you kind of, okay, where was it? What was the location? What was the exact path? And you got to go, you know, the D drive and this folder and this folder. There's none of that anymore, even. Um, it's just they've, they've even taken the work out of that, so you don't even need, um, the same reason um, we went with Pure is you don't need a storage admin and you don't really need a backup admin per se. You don't need someone spending a lot of time um, or you know, devoting a lot of time to the, the process, it just works. Um, you don't need to babysit it. Is, is what it comes to. So whereas, whereas you know, you have one of these legacy type um, storage arrays or backup systems, and you have to babysit it. Mm -hmm. Nobody has time to babysit that. So they've abstracted all that complexity yep. away, and you know, it's going to be interesting to see how the industry responds. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like the NFL. This industry is a copycat industry, yep. right? And so. At the same time, they have a big install base. People generally don't like to migrate, right, um, off of something to something else, so especially here's, large. So, so what I'll say to that is, and that part stinks. No one likes to migrate off of anything, but you're not really migrating off of anything. You don't have to really do much. You just pop something in. You just pop an appliance in, and it really takes care of the rest. Like even with with Rubrik and um, uh, Clumio, once you pop that appliance in your environment. It, um, root hardware or, or virtual, um, it, it integrate, it's integrating into your vCenter environment and it's, it knows what's in there and, and it just asks you, hey, what, uh, which of these you want to back up? What kind of policy you want on? How, many time, how often do you want to back up? And you just check a box, check right. boxes. So you know, just to clarify, so, so Clumia is not physical hardware. No, it's, it's virtual. It's virtual appliance. I think it's like, a, I think it kind of does the management on-premise, kind of like a data mover of sorts, so. And today it's just uh, narrow, right? It's VMware on AWS. Correct. Uh, presumably there's a roadmap there. I believe add. there's a roadmap for my understanding. I would have to think so. Um, I'm not, I'm, I'm kind of uh, cloud, cloud agnostic as far as who the player is, whether it's AWS, Azure, GCP, but um, you know, I have colleagues who, they're in Azure Shop, and that's what we do, and I get that. And um, so, I mean, I, I, I would imagine, I understand that they probably have Azure and GCP on the road. Well, they raised a bunch of dough, so I'm yeah. sure they got to. They got to do something there. with it, right? <laughs> yeah. Because the backup's so simple, so they're not a lot of engineering, you know. So, <laughs> so okay, so you don't have a dedicated storage admin or backup admin no. anymore? Did you used to, or? Um, before I got there, um, there was no SAN actually, so okay. there wasn't a storage. But yes, there was a lot of time spent on the backup piece, managing the backups. Just monitoring it, make sure things were 
there's a lot of time devoted to that. Now, th there's there's not a ton of time uh, spent on that. And was it qualified people doing it, or was it lawyers and paralegals doing it? Definitely that? lawyers. No. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I mean, you know, is our sys admins now? They they uh, they worry about other stuff. Yeah, that, that's important. What do they worry about? What do you, what do you, how have you shifted that resource? Um, a lot of our focus now is moving to um, Exchange in the Cloud, Office 365. So um, there's 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 quite a bit of work that goes into that, especially given our um, uh, some integrations that we have with our um, litig our case management software and all that. So there's there's a lot of time is being devoted to that right now. Mm -hmm. um, so our plan is to move uh, next year. Yeah. Okay. So a lot of tactical stuff that yeah. you got to get done. Last question. I always I'd love to ask CIOs this. What, things that vendors do that drive you crazy that you want to tell them, stop doing this? Um, there is not, everybody has a solution for something um, and not everybody needs that solution for your one niche. I mean, you, you go to some of these conferences now and there's, there's a billions of vendors, I don't know about billions, but you know, there's just dozens and dozens of vendors and they're, it's almost like some of them are just kind of uh, trying to monetize that one little thing that I don't really need. Um, so, uh, backups, I need cloud backups. Uh, you know, storage, I need storage. Outside of that, um, there's just, uh, and the best way I can put it is I, I've talked to some of some, some colleagues and they're, they're, just, they're just going through what we like to call vendor fatigue. It's just, it's just, it's just continuous, it's just all the time. Someone always has a solution for something. So, it's not that I don't want anybody to do something, but your your solution, you know, the solutions are just not for everybody, and mm -hmm. it's not, you know, it doesn't it doesn't work. Well, the everywhere. thing is, you're getting pitched all the time, mm -hmm. and you're experienced. So the CIOs have told me, look it, tell me what it is, what it does, what it costs, and I'll uh, give me five minutes, yeah. and I'll tell you if it if it fits my business or not. If it does, I'm going to want to know more. If it doesn't, hey, you know, respect my time. Yeah, usually it's for me. Uh, I'm approaching them. I'm approaching a vendor for a solution, not the other way around. If you're approaching me, I'm probably, uh, yeah, I don't have time to answer every call or email. I try to, um, but uh, you know, usually it's me saying, hey, you know what, we need something for this. And then every once in a while, you'll get a rubric or a clue me or a pure come around, you know, and you're like, oh, well, that looks cool. You know that. No, this is gonna blow your mind. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, sure. <laughs> but you know, then you find out. Oh, if you it doesn't, it. I owe you dinner. Yep. All right, all right, then they, right. they blow your mind, and it happens. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying the, that doesn't happen, but it's very rare. Well, a big part of this is, is this: so much venture capital has poured into the tech business in the last ten years, and what do they do with that VC? They promote. They hire salespeople. Yep. They are it's go to market, and so they're under a lot of pressure, and they're churning through those guys, and so they're calling guys like you, trying to get you in a headlock to buy something, and it's, it sounds like sometimes it's counterproductive. But yeah, uh, we, we I get it, and um, and that's that's their job that they have to like. I have a policy. I mean, I try and answer every email. At least just say, hey, I can't or not interested. At least that much. I yeah. try not to ignore folks, but sometimes it just doesn't work out. You know, right. No. Good, well, awesome. Thank you for sharing all that insight, Jason. It's great to have you back on. Yeah, thank you. All right, welcome. All right, thank you for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante from theCUBE. We'll see you next time.